Hello everyone, today we are going to learn about logistic regression. Logistic regression is mostly used for the binary classification. For example, if you have the email data, you want to classify this one to the spam or not spam. Or if you have the human data, then you want to classify to man or woman. That is the binary classification and uh, we mostly use the logistic regression for this binary classification. So let's take a look what is the difference between the linear regression and the logistic regression. Linear regression's output is continuous while the logistic regression's output is categorized. With the example of the temperature, well, you can see the output of the linear regression is going to be 30.5, 32.5, something like continuous value. But if you use the logistic regression for the weather data, the categories or categorized output can be something hot or cold. That's it. So why not linear regression for classification? Well, we can actually use the linear regression for binary classification, but there are some difficulties. So let's take a look. This example is a good example of the linear regression for classification, actually. So you can see this green line, which is your hypothesis of the linear regression, which is H data X is a data transpose X here. And you can see here the, the threshold is 0.5. So if it's greater than 0.5, you can say it's hot and less than 0.5, you can say it's cold. So you can use the linear regression for the classification using this kind of trick. But if you have the something different data set, the distribution, something like this. So you have the, the red dot at the most right side and uh, the blue dot at the most left side, further away. Then you can see the threshold now is 0.2. So this is something like difficult because uh, when you have the binary classification, you want to use threshold as 0.5, something like 50%. If it's over 50%, you want to say it's true. Less 50%, you want to say it's false. But you can see with the linear regression, the threshold can change to any value. And the other drawback is like the most right side, you see that the hypothesis X is greater than 1.0. And the most left side, you can see the hypothesis X is less than the 0.0, .0 here. This gives some difficulty to you because your expectation having the, the output of the H data X uh, from the 0 to 1 because we think it's probability. So we now want to talk about the uh, logistic regression and that the sigmoid is the key of the logistic regression. So the sigmoid function, as you can see here, uh, the output of this one gives range from the 0 to 1 always. So the function of this one is 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus z. And this z is exactly same with your linear regression's output, which is a data transpose x. See? So how we can find the best data now? So we have the sigmoid function and uh, for the classification, binary classification, we can use the sigmoid function and get the range of the 0 to 1, but we need to optimize this one, optimize this one, optimize the data to uh, get your hypothesis is most similar to the real data set distribution. So minimizing cost function is the way to find the best data here. So what is the cost? Um, when you say this green dot as your y value and the red dot as your hypothesis, the difference between these two is the cost. So difference between your hypothesis and the real value is the cost. Sometimes we call it error rate. And when you have more than two data, then you can just uh, take the average of this one. So sum up and uh, divide by the total data count. So now, how to minimize the cost function? Well, when we minimize the cost function of the linear regression, we use mean square error, MSE. But not for this logistic regression. We are not going to use the mean square error for the logistic regression because the sigmoid function is non-linear function and the squaring research will research in the non-convex function with many local minimums. That means gradient descent may not find the global minimum. So we are going to use the log loss, uh, which is exactly the same with the cross entropy actually. So what is the log loss? Well, look at this graph. When y is equal to 1, we are going to use minus log uh, your hypothesis. So if your hypothesis uh, output is 1, then the, it's exactly the same with y value. So the cost will be 0 because there's no difference, right? But if your hypothesis output is different than the y, 
then uh, you will give some cost here. So if you go further from the one, then uh, you have more cost here. So because you want to penalize for this one. And when your y is zero, then we use this function, minus log one minus your hypothesis. So if your hypothesis output is zero, then there is no cost, zero, right? And if it goes further, then uh, you give more cost so that you want to penalize this cost. So we basically have two cost function when y is equal to 1, when y is equal to 0. Actually, we can combine these two functions, something like this. You may think this is kind of difficult, but there is no difficulty here. For example, when y is equal to 1, the right side will be just a 0 because y minus 1 will be just a 0. And when y is 0, then the left side will be just a 0 because y will be 0, so the left side will be just 0 here. And the combined cost function can be organized just taking a minus at the left side like this. And if you have multiple data set, then the, you can just sum every data uh, cost function and uh, divide by the total number of data point. That's it. I hope this helps you to understand the logistic regression. I will see you on the next video. Thank you.